Well, hello and welcome to our first video for HTML entitled Creating a Resume Page. And we're going to use HTML5 and we'll use brackets as our editor. Let's see what our goals are for this video. We're going to, first of all, learn some basic HTML5 tag structure that will be common to all documents that we build in this class. We will also encounter in the building of this resume many tags that are very common for displaying various page contents, such as headings, paragraphs, three different kinds of lists, and that's pretty common to what most pages will consist of. HTML5 also has some semantic tags. These help the browser to understand the meaning of certain sections of your document. Header towards the top, various sections of the resume. Articles we don't use in this particular document, but they are sort of subsections. Uh, footer towards the bottom. Uh, we don't have a navigation bar because it's just one page here in the resume page, but in a normal website we'd have a nav area and asides would be like for a little sidebar, maybe some advertising, things like that. So we'll encounter some of these HTML5 semantic tags towards the end of this video as we build out the final versions of the resume. And then editing with brackets and its extension. So as our HTML editor, we will use brackets. If you're totally unfamiliar with brackets, you should take a look at the brackets introductory video that I've created. And I'm kind of assuming that you have that much basic knowledge of brackets, its interface, and particularly its extensions. We'll be using the HTML skeleton, HTML wrapper, and Beautify extensions. You need to have those installed along with your bracket software that you download and install for free from brackets.io. And lastly, HTML validation. It's important that the HTML we write not only works, but is valid and is therefore more likely to be compatible across all kinds of different browsers and all kinds of different devices from phones to tablets to desktops to notebooks, etc. And having validated your code is a good step in that direction. So we'll see that again towards the end. So that's what we're looking at here. And to begin with, we're going to, we're going to launch brackets. If you, again, don't have that installed, you probably would be best just stopping and going and checking out that brackets introductory video so you can get up to speed on it and go from there. So if we're going to build this resume page, we're going to begin from scratch doing file new. And then, as you perhaps saw in that earlier brackets video, we have some help to start a document if we have that HTML skeleton extension loaded. And here it is on the side of the interface. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on basic HTML skeleton and done. And we have a good starting point now for our resume page. I do want to save this. So right off the bat, we're going to save this introductory code as resume1.html and I'm going to save that on my desktop but you may have a better place to save it possibly feel free to do so notice that once it gets saved as an HTML document brackets responds by recognizing the code and being therefore able to color code it and that will serve to be a good check for us to make sure our code is correct by checking these color coded tags and making sure that we don't see red where there might be errors for example all right a couple of cleanup items here on this basic initial code we're going to take line 5 the meta tag that has name equal viewport we're going to delete that out because we don't use that tag. We don't need it. There's nothing wrong with it, but for consistency, our book does not use it and our general files don't have it either. So we'll, we'll just ignore that. I'm going to go up to the HTML tag on line two and fill in the language as EN for English. You could also attach a country code in there as well, such as EN-US or EN-GB perhaps, if it's uh, being written and intended for usage in Great Britain, for example, GB. All that really does is it tells not so much the browser, but it would tell screen readers what language the actual content of this resume is in. And maybe you'd get an accent difference between U.S. and Great Britain as that screen reader reads it out. At any rate, let's continue on with our content area. Let's do the title first. This is going to be a resume for Joe Student. So I'm going to put Joe Student's resume page up in the title. Now the title 
is not visually part of the page's content that would go in the body area. This head section here contains the title always, and the body would contain headings and things that go in the actual page area. So this is just going to go up on the tab in a browser and also be something that search engines might notice. So let's take a look at what we're trying to aim for in this resume. I happen to have a final version of this that we can take a look at. So here is our goal. This is what we're trying to create with this code that we're writing over here. So we're going to have a major heading here which says Joe Student's Resume on it. Here is an example of what the title might do. It goes up here in this tab area of the browser and if you don't have a title in your document it'll end up saying untitled document which is not particularly nice to see. So this resume is going to have as I said start with a heading at the top and then it will have an area of contact information below it. Then it will have separate sections as most resumes do for objective, skills, education, work experience, and references at the end and then a little footer at the bottom to identify who created the page. So within each of those separate sections you can see we have some organized information. We have a list of skills. We call this an unordered or bulleted list. This is an ordered list of education related information there. One, two, three indicates it's an ordered list. Another unordered list here in the work experience area. And then in the references area, pay attention to the way that's structured. It looks a little different than the other lists. This is our third type of list. This is called a description list, in which case we have the staggered indentation. We have, in this case, a person's name and then a description for them, which in this case identifies where they worked and what their phone number is and then a second set of each, a name, and then a description of them in the form of a company and phone number. So we call that a description list, an unordered list, and an ordered list. So we'll see all three types of HTML lists as we build up this project. And with that in mind, we're going to be trying to build that content into this body area using brackets and some of its extensions to help us along the way. So the first thing, as you saw, is that big heading at the top of the resume. Headings in HTML are either H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, depending on their prominence. This is the biggest heading on the page, so it's going to be an H1. And notice that brackets is trying to help us. When I do an H, it's figuring, okay, you probably are about to complete that with a number, 1 through 6 and you can click on it to save you typing. Now, as I finish the tag, which begins with that left bracket and closes with the right bracket, notice that it put in, without me typing it, a closing tag for that H1, and then placed my cursor right between the two, allowing me to actually type the text for that heading. So in this case, it's going to be Joe student's resume. So notice my title I purposely made slightly different so that we can see which goes where. This is going to be a big font at the top of our page content and this is going up in the tab area that we saw earlier. All right I'm going to hit enter at the end of that line and next is going to come the contact information for Joe student and that's going to be in the form of a paragraph which is a p tag. Again brackets helps me with the closing p tag. And the content for that is just going to be his address, 123 Any Street, whatever city, some state, 92837. All right, now we want to put a email address and a phone number on the line below. So we could just create another paragraph. But if we do, there'll be a big vertical separation between the two, which we do not want here. We want these two lines of the contact information close together. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a break in the line with a BR tag. And we don't really need to do this, but I'm going to hit enter there just so visually you can see the break in the code as well as what you'll see on the page. So now we just continue with the contact information the form of an address here, joestudent at gmail.com, and two dashes to separate the email from the phone number, 
987-4321. So there you go. At this point, we should save. And let's go ahead and click the live preview button. And we should see our resume so far. And here you can see the two lines of the paragraph close together. There's not this big gap as you see the gap here between the H1 and the paragraph itself. So, so far so good. And here up on the tab is the title, Joe Student's Resume page. And Joe Student's Resume is the big H1 heading. An H2 heading would be slightly smaller. An H3 heading slightly smaller from there and so on. So let's continue. We now have completed the main header area and we want to work down now towards the objective section and that's going to be an H2 heading not as prominent as the main page heading was so H2 and objective and put the cursor at the end hit enter we move below that now and the objective is just going to be a paragraph so key tags there and the paragraph will read to obtain and extremely high paying position with limitless upward mobility in a stress free working environment. We're not asking for much, are we? So there's the objective as a paragraph. Again, let's save and note that control S is your shortcut for saving so you don't have to go through that mouse maneuver each time. And we're going to quickly see here in the browser we have our objective heading. You can see an H2 here is smaller than the H1 and the paragraph below it. So we are building section by section and testing after each one of those attempts. All right, so let's move on now to the next section and I'm just putting an extra space between each section. Uh, the browser doesn't care about that white space. You could put 10 blank lines and it would still just show its normal separation between those items. All right, let's continue on. The next section is going to be for our skills. And again, that's an H2. You might have thought H3, but this section is just as relevant as the objective section and the ones below it, such as education, work experience. They're all going to be H2s. They're the same importance. So here, skills. And the skills that we want to create here are going to be in an unordered list. Unordered lists in HTML are ULs. And then typically we have those open and closing tags on separate lines because each of the list items that make up the bullets are going to be placed between these two tags on their own lines themselves. And inside an unordered list go LIs. So let's go ahead and enter the first LI pair. This is the first list item that we have open and close. And for the skills, creating web pages is going to be our first listed skill there. I will hit enter and what we need next is another LI. Now you'll notice the indentation is kind of being fixed by brackets and I didn't do it properly but LI should go with inside the UL. I'm not too worried about it right now because I've got a beautify extension that will take care of that for me and we'll try that in a few minutes. So the second skill that I want to list here is playing video games. I'm sure that will impress our future employer. Enter again, and the last LI. And this one, even more impressive. I've got some social networking skills that will be sure to impress. So there are my skills, three of them. They will show up as three bulleted separate lines underneath the skills heading. And I'm going to ahead and demonstrate this beautify. You can wait to the very end, or you can beautify it at any point you want. But as I beautify, what you want to look at is how these LIs are not lined up nicely above one another. After beautifying, you can see that they are. It also made some modifications to make the line spacing more readable. So beautify is a really nice extension in terms of making your code look nice. And especially I will appreciate that when you're submitting your code for grading if it's been beautified. So that's a high recommendation. Let's go ahead now and save. And we want to check out what that unordered list looks like now in the browser. And there you can see the skills section. 
an H2 for objective, followed by a paragraph, an H2 for skills, followed by an unordered list, and the browser just gives you these default bullets. You can control, by the way, a lot of the formatting using CSS. HTML should be used just to structure the content as we're doing now, and we should not be worried about the fact that it doesn't look very pretty, because that's something that we can come along later and use CSS to format it as we see fit to make it look pretty. So right now, we're going to move on to the next section for education. The education, again, is going to be in H2. And we then move below it for what's going to be an ordered list. Now, the only thing that's different about an ordered list versus an unordered list are the surrounding tag of OL instead of UL. All right, so what I'm saying there is that inside the OLs would be another set of LIs, much like we had before. The only difference here is that it's surrounded by an OL instead of a UL. And that's how the browser knows to number it rather than bullet it. Okay, what I'm going to show you, though, is a nice trick. We have an extension not showing over here but it is an extension that loads in the edit menu. It's called HTML wrapper, and it's designed for these very situations we're about to find ourselves in. So let's take advantage of it. Um, we're going to list the educational items. There are three list items here, but I'm going to purposely leave out the LIs, and the wrapper extension will put them in for me. All right, so now we're going to list those three ordered list items without the tags of LI around them. The first one is going to be 2015 graduate of Riverside East High School, comma, with a GPA 3.5. I'm just going to hit enter. Again, no tags around it. The second item is 2017 web developer certificate from, guess where? Riverside City College. And lastly, a third list item, currently finishing AS degree with plans to transfer. And now we're going to select those three, and we are going to take advantage now of this HTML wrapper extension to put the LIs in there for me. So I select the three, I click on the HTML wrapper and look at that. It automatically wraps those guys with LIs. It kind of sees that you're inside of a list and knows what tags should go there. Pretty cool. So it saves you some time and effort there, especially with long lists of things. That's really helpful. And it's used not only with lists, there are other areas that you can use it in. You can go visit the web page for that extension. It'll show you all the good things it can do. At any rate, that's the end of the education section. So in keeping with our workflow, we should save. And then we should check out the changes. There you can see the ordered list, one, two, three, in the education section. And let's move on. So you want to get down below the closing OL for our next section. We're almost done now. We have a work experience section here. Yet another H2 for work experience. And under work experience, you would normally be listing several jobs here, possibly, but we're just going to do one. So below the work experience, we're going to list our first job there as an H3 heading and a very impressive job title, Fidget Spinner Salesperson. And then below the H3, we're going to list some more things about that particular job, such as the time spent at that job and the name of the company and anything else that might be relevant. Again, this is going to be a bulleted list, so it's going to be a UL. And then between the two tags there, we're going to list a few accomplishments here. So again, I'm going to avoid the LIs and we'll use that nice wrapper extension. So May 2016 to January 2017 is the first item in the list. That's the time period they spent at that job. The company's name, Worldwide Imports, LLC. And lastly, Salesperson of the Month for July 2016. 
So those are the three bullet points. I'm going to select those three lines. We're going to come to the edit menu and we're going to do HTML wrapper and boom, we get our LIs for free. It also, by the way, indents nicely. Beautify would do that for us too, but HTML wrapper takes care of that for us. I'm going to delete out that extra line that I have in there. Beautify it so that the indentation gets back where it should be. And we're done with another section. So let's save in keeping with our workflow. And let's double check and make sure that things are looking good. And you can see our last work experience section with the fidget spinner salesperson heading. And this is an H3, clearly smaller than the H2 for work experience. And everything is looking good so far as we progress down through the sections of our resume. Let's continue. The last section that we have here is for references, and that is going to be another H2 for references. And instead of a normal list of unordered or ordered type, in this case, the information that we want to give about our references includes the person's name and then also the place they work and their phone number so that someone could contact them. So there's kind of two pieces of information. It's not just a simple list like a bullet list or ordered list. So we're going to use a different type of list, the third type of list in HTML called a description list. And that is done with BL tags. Now, unfortunately, the HTML wrapper extension doesn't handle description lists very well, so we are not going to use it. We're going to have to code this one by hand. So between the open and close tags, we have two things. We have DTs and DDs. So the DTs are the, in this case, it will be the person's name. We're going to have fun with these names. The first person's name is going to be Dinah Soar. And where did that person work and what's their contact information? Those are going to be DDs, the uh, descriptions. And for Dinah, where else would a dinosaur work but at a natural history museum, of course, comma. And then we need to give the phone number for Dinah, and that's 951-222-2000. And we won't worry about the indentation issues because we'll be beautifying it later. And the second reference is going to be another DT. So we kind of have alternating DDs and DTs inside of a definition list. So this is going to be the person's name. This person's name is Mike Rowave. Microwave has some description information as well. DD for that. And Mike works where else at A, B, C appliances. Where else would you find a microwave? 909, area code 333-4567. So that is the information for the two references. I'm going to click beautify and you probably will see some adjustments of the indentations going on there. And we do. And now let's save and take a look at our last resume section. And you can see the references area and you can see the staggered indentation. Now the indentation here has nothing to do with the indentation we might impose on it here. It's just that the browser sees a DT and it puts it on the left, sees a DD, and it indents it by default. All right, so that concludes the main sections of the content. That said, we do have one more little footer information at the bottom and we'll use a paragraph for that. Resume page created by, and you can put your own name in there. Instead of the words in your name, put your own name in there. And we'll go ahead and save that final item. And see if we can confirm that down at the bottom, not part of the definition list, clearly separated from it vertically. So there you go. We have completed the main content of our resume, taking a look over this page. We have quite a bit of content and tags, mostly headings, paragraphs, and lists, making up the tags that we used from HTML5. All right, um, one of the things that you might normally be concerned about is, is our code valid? Do we have an expectation that it should work right throughout most browsers and most kinds of display devices? So one way to do that is to, um, well, your editor may do some validation for you. 
but what I'm going to do here is copy and paste this code into some other validation tools and I have those validation tools available here. This is also available in Blackboard for the class. So first of all, I want to go to the W3C HTML validator and check that out. This is a validation service that's hosted by the W3C who makes up the specifications for HTML and CSS and others. So they are the ultimate authorities on what is valid and what is not. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to click on validate by direct input and I'll just paste that code in from my editor and click the check button. And let's see if we have any errors of concern. Uh, it says document checking completed, no errors or warnings to show. So that's great. Essentially, we are valid. Now we have some other things that we may want to check. There's a closing tag checker. Now if you're using a tool such as we are here with brackets, the likelihood that you have a misplaced closing tag is pretty unlikely since it builds them for you. But you never know, you might accidentally delete something or type over something. So this is always good to check. Do it after you do the W3C validator. Do the closing tag checker. And again, we just paste our code in. And then once that's done, click check it. And it says, congratulations, no one closed tag. It takes care of two things there. One, it's basically valid. And then there's also, beyond being valid, you want to make sure you don't have any missing closing tags. It's possible you could have a missing closing tag and it's still considered valid, but it's not good style, it's not good coding, and it could lead to future problems. So you really want to check both. Now, this validation tools had one additional check, but this is a CSS validator. Uh, later in the course, we'll be using CSS to format our pages, and then we'll come here and try to do this validation for the CSS. But in our case, we have no CSS to validate. So that's the validation aspect of things. Now, before we wrap this up, we wanted to also take a little look at HTML5 semantic tags. Now what semantic tags are is a way of taking some of the code and organizing it in a way that makes sense to a browser and makes sense to humans too. So for example, uh, we listed some of these types of tags like header, footer, and so on. And so let's, let's consider this top area to be the header and the very bottom to be the footer. So these are tags that you can put header. Now we have to be a little bit careful because of course it wants to put that closing tag right there, but it really doesn't belong there. So I'm going to cut it from there and paste it below. And then we can go to the beautify to get it all to arrange itself and indent nicely. So what I've done is I've put opening and closing header tags around the H1 and the contact information in the paragraph below it. So that doesn't really change how it's going to look in the browser. It just organizes the information a little bit better code-wise. Let's go down to the very bottom where we have that final paragraph. And I'm going to enclose it. And similarly, footer tags. Now there's a situation where the completion tool helps me to not have to type as much. And again, I'm going to cut and paste to get the closing tag where I want it, surrounding the paragraph, and then we can beautify to get things to nicely indent. And I'm going to add an extra blank line in there too to separate the footer from the other code. And now we can look into the possibility of adding some section tags. You could put section tags around each one of these sections, resume sections. That would be a lot of tags and it would be a lot of work and it wouldn't really gain us a whole lot, so possibly not worth the effort, but that's basically what those kinds of tags do. Let's at the very least put section tags around that whole area between the header and the footer. So one big section that would include the objective, the skills, the education, the work experience, and the references. Okay, so I'm going to cut the closing section tag from there, and I'm going to put it here at the end of the references area. That's the closing section there. Again, we'll beautify. 
And what that does is it indents everything inside that section so that you can see how long that section goes. That's the concept behind semantic tags. It helps now for you to be able to see, oh, this is the heading information there. Oh, this is this big section, and that's the footer at the bottom. So it organizes both for the browser, for screen readers. It also can help for search engines. So good idea all around to use those semantic tags. All right, well, that concludes our goals for the resume video. We covered brackets, we covered tags, we covered HTML5 structure, validation tools, and some semantic tags at the end. So thank you, and see you in the next video.